What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check updates, the two new upcoming packages, the physical infrastructure package, known as the American Jobs Plan, that will create millions of jobs and help bring us out of this recession, as well as the next stimulus package, known as the American Families Plan, that has about 15 different stimulus items to be included in this package that they're currently negotiating on right now. Remember, there's a lot more than just the main stimulus check that we talk about on this program. Um, there are literally dozens of different stimulus check programs, uh, items, and different programs that can put money in your pocket. Uh, the video before this, we talked about all the different states that are passing state stimulus checks and uh, state stimulus programs, as well as back to work bonuses. After you're done with this, I'll link you to that video. Uh, you should watch that if you haven't yet. We'll be going over some more programs in this video. Um, there's so many different programs that can literally put money in your pocket right now that uh, literally the average person does not know about unless they watch this channel. Um, because, yeah, there's these child tax credits, which are going to be absolutely just major, major mind-blowing news starting on July 15th. Children and the person who claims them as a dependent is going to start receiving $250 checks every single month on July 15th for children ages 6 through 17 and $300 checks for children under the age of 6 for the rest of the year. And then a one lump sum on tax returns of $1,500 or $1,800 for children under the age of six for the first half of this year, those payments that they missed. And the majority of people do not even know about it. This is already passed from the third stimulus check package. It's called the Child Tax Credits, which is kind of the name that's stuck to it, which is a little bit different than the stimulus check that uh, everybody knows about. But coincidentally, they're both actually the same type of thing. They're both advanced refundable tax credits uh, either way, they're checks that put money in your account or into your bank account or direct deposits that put money into your bank account. We're going to be talking about some more things uh, like that in this video, as well as the negotiations going on right now over the physical infrastructure package and what will really lead to the next stimulus package known as the American Families Plan. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates. It's completely free to do so. And if you can, give this video a thumbs up or a like down below. It really helps out our channel. Also, I want to wish that you're having a fabulous Memorial Day weekend. Remember Memorial Day to remember our fallen heroes that have helped defend our country, as well as our veterans who uh, maybe didn't fall but still defended our country. Thank you for your service. New COVID cases yesterday over the, the Memorial Day weekend was down to as low as about 12,000 new cases yesterday which is um, the lowest since March 23rd of 2020. Now, cases are always lower on the weekends because of the way reporting goes, but uh, we've been averaging only 21,000 new cases per day of uh, new positive cases as about 50% of the population. As you can see in this graph right here, at least 167 million people from the United States alone have at least one dose, which is almost 51%. And 134 million people are fully vaccinated with either two doses or one dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is 41%. So there's really 50% uh, of United States people that have already received at least one dose. Now remember, even if 100% of people were vaccinated and the virus was completely gone, that still wouldn't mean that we don't need more packages, infrastructure package, and the next stimulus package, because the economic recovery is likely going to take years. In 2008, 2009, it took four years for the economic recovery, and that really brings us to um, the next round of stimulus checks, the next stimulus package known as the American Families Plan that's already been discussed, and the next, uh, the first part of that, the physical infrastructure package known as the American Jobs Plan. And uh, this infrastructure package will really help us get out of this recession a little bit faster as it's supposed to create millions of jobs and uh, cost around $1.7 to $2 trillion, depending on if the Democrats negotiate with the Republicans. Right now, the Senate Democrats are saying that they're going to, uh, they're actually going ahead and starting on the process to pass this without Republicans. So they're going to pass this with 
or without Republicans and bipartisan support, which means that they're already starting on, at least in the background, the reconciliation process and going through the paperwork and drafting the bills that they're going to need to do because um, they just don't know if they're going to be able to come to a deal with Republicans. Now, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says that the infrastructure talks can't go on forever and that there needs to be a clear direction by next week whether or not they're going to officially go with the reconciliation process or if they're going to be able to make a deal with the Democrats. Now, that is by June 7th, which at this point is only, what, eight days away. You can see here Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says Sunday that Senate Democrats and Republicans must establish a clear direction on infrastructure by June 7th, which is eight days away. So we are getting down to the final um, the final days here for them to decide if they're going to go reconciliation or not. Now, if they go reconciliation process, which is the uh, process where the Democrats can basically pass it completely on their own in the Senate with only 50 to 51 votes, um, that means that they can pass it without any uh, Republican support at all from the Senate. That's how the third stimulus check package was passed. Not a single Republican voted on it, and yet they passed it without them anyways because the Democrats control the House the Senate, and the presidency. Now, the Senate's tied 50-50, so if the Democrats lose even a single vote next time around in 2022, uh, they'll lose control of the Senate, and they only have the House of Representatives controlled by a few votes as well. I think it's like four or five votes they can only lose. Um, and it, it's different because they've had some people retire and that they're trying to replace, and then they had a few people pass away as well. So uh, the number kind of differs by the day. But, um, yeah, the Democrats are going to need to push everything they want to in this next couple packages. They're already talking about another package as well after this because the economic recovery is going to at least, at least take the rest of this year. And that would be like a miracle if we get the economic recovery done in the next six months, right? So um, they already have the physical infrastructure package the next stimulus package, and another package after that as well. And Democrats want to include all sorts of different things in these next couple packages. Number one, the fourth stimulus check. We have over 80 different lawmakers that are pushing just from the House and really, the U.S. House of Representatives is also led by one of the leading Democrats that's really actually starting to become uh, somewhat more in power than House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, and that is Democratic Representative Jayapal, who is also the leader of the Democratic Progressive Caucus, uh, which is about half of the, the Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives, as well as she's the co-sponsor for the bill in the House of Representatives, uh, along with uh, Detroit or Michigan Representative Rashida Tlaib for a $2,000 one-time stimulus check, then followed by $1,000 monthly payments that would go until one year after the pandemic is declared over, again, to help with the economic recovery as well. There's also 28 different lawmakers in the Senate, including Senator Bernie Sanders and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, that are um, for multiple monthly recurring stimulus checks. As you can see here, uh, recurring stimulus checks, they actually want them to include this in the next infrastructure package. Uh, I think it's more likely to be in the next stimulus package, the American Families Plan. But nonetheless, this is what the Democrats are pushing President Biden to do. President Biden did say that the Democrats can put a stimulus check in these next packages if they want to, and it's simply up to Congress. So that's why when we see these different articles and these different letters that say um, they want to include recurring stimulus check payments in this next package and that this is what Democrats want, well, that's what the the president is saying, that they can include this next stimulus check or monthly recurring stimulus checks in these next packages if they need to or if they want to. And President Biden says that these weak April jobs report and uh, retail sales report makes it clear that there is the need for more stimulus.
And really the April jobs report was terrible. As you can see here on the screen, we were supposed to create over 1 million new jobs and only created 266,000 instead. The other thing the Democrats are doing is kicking around the idea of passing what's called automatic stabilizers, as you can see here, which would make stimulus checks and unemployment uh, bonus checks continue on automatically if the uh, economic conditions remain bad or if the economic conditions dip in the future that the automatic stabilizers would automatically kick in and they would do like something like if unemployment remains above 5%, then a stimulus check would be kicked out every month until um, that condition improves. Another thing Democrats and Republicans are fighting about right now is this January 6th insurrection. Here's a Democratic Senator on Joe Manchin on a crucial vote they just had in the Senate. Before January the 6th, 2021, an attack on Congress and democracy at our Capitol at the hands of our own citizens was unimaginable. In the 240 plus years of our great nation's history, we have never seen an attack of this nature. Not even during our nation's horrific civil war did this happen. This was our chance to have a bipartisan commission that would allow for an impartial investigation into the events of that horrific day so that we are better able to prevent another attack on our nation. Let me be clear. Democratic leadership in both the House and the Senate accepted the proposed changes from Republicans because a commission of this nature must be bipartisan to be successful. This commission passed the House with a bipartisan vote. The failed vote in the Senate had six brave Republicans, but that was four short of the 10 necessary to advance the legislation. Choosing to put politics and political election above the health of our democracy is unconscionable. And the betrayal of the oath that we each take is something they will have to live with. To the brave Capitol Police officers who risk their lives every single day to keep us safe, the Capitol and congressional staff that work around the clock to keep Congress running, even the reporters who work hard to deliver congressional news to the American people, and every American who watched in horror as our Capitol was attacked on January the 6th, you deserve better. And I am sorry that my Republican colleagues and friends let political fear prevent them from doing what they know in their hearts to be right. So yeah, there's a Senator, uh, Joe Manchin from Democrat, Democratic Senator from Joe Manchin, bashing the Republicans. He's often called, especially by some of you guys in our comments, a dino, a de Democrat in name only. But here he is bashing Republicans over them not allowing a commission to look into um, the January 6th events. And Senator Joe Manchin is one of the, if not the most important vote in the Senate because the Senate is a 50-50 vote. So when Democrats go to pass this next infrastructure package and this next stimulus package um, with reconciliation, they need every single Democrat to go along and vote to get those 50 votes. So then it'll be a 50-50 tie, and the tiebreaker goes to the vice president, who is Kamala Harris, for the 51st vote, which is how many you need for the reconciliation process. However, Senator Joe Manchin always seems to be a thorn in the side of Democrats up until the last moment. He did pass the third stimulus check package, and it's likely what he'll do for these next two packages as well, if they have to pass them through the reconciliation process. So if they have to do that, um, they may have to negotiate with him a little bit, but ultimately he does end up voting with the Democrats 99% of the time. We could also see him kind of bashing Republicans here, saying that they're not even allowing a commission to look into the January 6th riots on the Capitol, um, which was kind of blocked by Republicans in the in the Senate. We had six Republicans in the Senate vote for it, but you need 10 because you need 60 votes in the Senate to pass a bill to get rid of what they call the filibuster rule, which requires 60 votes in the Senate, except for when you're passing a reconciliation um bill or reconciliation package, which the Senate parliamentarian says they can do two more times this year for the physical infrastructure package and the next stimulus package, unless they combine them into one. But they also can go back and amend bills as well. So for example, they can go back and amend the third stimulus check package bill and add an additional stimulus check on there if they need to. But for bills like this, that was just um, an average regular old everyday bill to, um, in this case, do a bill on uh, setting up a commission for the January 6th events. Uh, they needed 60 votes and, and they didn't get it. So 
This is why Democratic lawmakers are also pushing to get rid of the filibuster, which would make it so you would only need a simple majority in the Senate with that 50 to 51 votes. That is how the House of Representatives is, is that you only need one vote past uh, 50 percent in the House of Representatives. And a long, long, long time ago, the Senate used to be that way as well. But the filibuster rule kind of became a thing and now has kind of been um, turned into this, hey, if you don't get 60 votes, you can block a bill forever. Now, if they were to get rid of this, that even Republicans would benefit from this in the future, because again, if the Republicans win even a single vote in 2022 in the Senate, they can take over the Senate because again, it's a 50-50 tie, literally very, very narrow margins. So whenever any future Congress, Democrats or Republicans have control of the Senate, if they're able to get rid of the filibuster, they would have that advantage to pass things with only 50 to 51 votes. That is exactly how the Republicans passed the 2017 Trump tax cuts. Um, they passed that with the reconciliation process, which is just 50 to 51 votes. However, as we know, the reconciliation process is tougher. It's a longer process. And also it has to affect the budget when uh, the national budget or the government budget, when we talk about a January 6th commission to look into those events, that, that doesn't affect the budget. And they wouldn't use it anyways for that because they only have two more times to use it. And then they can go back and amend those bills. So they have a limited amount of times they can use that. They do get more uh, after October. That's just for this fiscal year. But that's likely at this point how Democrats are going to have to continue passing packages, including future stimulus checks and future stimulus packages, is through the reconciliation process. Because it just seems like the Republicans and Democrats are looking at this pandemic from completely different point of views. And while well, Democrats happen to be in power now, so if they want to pass things, um, it does not seem like their negotiations with Republicans are going very well, and they're going to likely have to pass them on their own, which is kind of exactly why the Senate Democrats and S Senator Chuck Schumer are saying that they're now working to craft the infrastructure bill um, through the reconciliation process with or without Republicans, because uh, basically they're giving them just this next eight days or so to um, say, hey, we need to make a deal within the next week. And if we don't, then we're going to pass this bill without Republicans and pass it with just the, the Democrats alone through the reconciliation process. Now, at the end of the day, they'll still need to get Senator Joe Manchin and all the Democrats on board to vote together. I think we'll m likely see some grandstanding or maybe some, uh, you know, some, uh, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to vote for this. So we'll see what happens. But at the end of the day, like I said, 99% of the time, Joe Manchin does end up voting with the Democrats and we'll likely end up see that as well here. Whether or not he'll want some concessions or he'll want to make some changes like he did with the third stimulus check package, well, that could happen. Um, but we did know that ultimately he ended up voting with the Democrats. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'll keep you up to date with all these different stimulus packages and what's coming on in the horizon. And uh, you should click on this next video here that I'll link you to in a moment about the state stimulus checks that are going on right now. But first, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates. It's completely free to do so. After subscribing, click the bell icon that appears next to the subscribe button to all notifications to get reminder notifications when we go live with new videos, which is every day at 10 a.m. 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click this video here to watch my video about the state stimulus checks that are coming out. And you can click this video here to watch President Biden's Social Security increase to $1,341. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.